All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Matt. I'm a product manager on the Android Enterprise team. Um, for the last four years, we've been building out Android Enterprise. And one of the interesting challenges that we've always had feedback on from partners who are integrating with the technology that we're building both in uh, managed Google Play and in the Android operating system itself is just the complexity of how do you integrate to all of the, these, these various touch points uh, to apply uh, policies on the device, whether that's to do with password complexity management all the way through to configuring apps on the device. Until recently, when we've launched the Android Management API, uh, which is a cloud-based API where you can just do a fire and forget, set a policy, and you don't need to worry about the rest. So that's what we're going to focus on today, is how to use uh, the Android Management API. Now, who, who should be using this? Well, obviously, um, in, in the first instance, you, Enterprise mobility managers and, and unified endpoint management platforms uh, are starting to look at the Android Management API as a simpler way to keep pace with the feature set uh, that we continuous, continually evolve on Android. But then also, if you're a, a developer looking to build you know, a, an end-to-end -end solution um, that incorporates uh, device management. So let's say, you know, I'll pick an example hypothetically out of the air. You're, you want to deploy or build a meeting room management solution, and you want to have a tablet in every room uh, with a sort of a touch screen interface. Right? You may not want to have a separate device management capability. You may want to have that, that management built into the end-to-end -end, you know, meeting room management platform. So this is a really good way to do that. And then finally, uh, we're seeing enterprises uh, wanting to build bespoke solutions uh, for managing devices within their organization. Um, because maybe you know, uh, a, a traditional management platform doesn't uh, meet the requirements that they have. And so again, the Android Management API is really a great way to get started uh, with that. And really, you know, we've, we're building out the feature set, so it should be now, particularly if you're starting out from the beginning, the way to manage Android devices now, regardless of whether those are knowledge worker devices, or more dedicated applications like kiosks, um, or, or even uh, you know, moving on to th applications like you know, virtual and augmented reality devices and, and IoT. So before we get sort of into the depths of the API itself, I want to just highlight some of the pain points around uh, you know, the challenges of um, you know, integrating the, the, the traditional way. And so from an architectural standpoint, you know, let's take a look. In the middle there, you have your, your management server uh, talking through a sort of an agent app on the device, so a, what we call a device policy client. And that would be the actual app that is calling the individual sort of operating system level uh, APIs to set policies and that kind of thing. Uh, below that, um, there's, there needs to be some mechanism for you know, uh, push uh, sending push notifications to that uh, agent app so that you can update the policies. You know, here we're suggesting Firebase Cloud Messaging, uh, but you might have some other technologies that you, you use instead. And then finally, for app management, we've got the Play EMM API, uh, which is a cloud-based API, uh, to then push install apps, uh, curate a enterprise app store, and also push configuration down to those apps as well. So you know, three different interfaces that you would need to you, uh, build against. And if we just give a, you an example of sort of one use case of, of the interactions that you would need to go through, it's sort of like a, a mandatory app uninstall. So here you're trying to force uninstall uh, a particular app on a user's device. So first, you need to wake up the DPC. So you use your, your favorite uh, sort of push notification, push, push messaging uh, service to do that. The, uh, once the, the device policy client is awake, that will pull the, the new policy uh, down from the server. Um, we'll then uh, tell the device to unblock uninstall, because we might have uh, 
you know, block the user from uninstalling that, that app, so we need to make sure it's uninstallable on the device. Confirm the policy change has been implemented. Uh, then initiate the uninstall request to Google Play. We need to then sort of check that that's been done. We might have to retry. So there's seven different interactions that you're, uh, you're having to uh, develop there. So we're trying to get rid of a lot of that extra complexity and those different uh, uh, interfaces that you need to work with and actually come up with something uh, new and policy-based. So here's the new architecture. A management server just talks to a single cloud API, uh, which is policy-based. So you don't have to worry anymore about this set of individual interactions and you know, checking that something is completed before doing the next thing and then possibly retrying that next thing bec because it might not have succeeded. Um, here we're in encapsulating all of those different interactions. We're worrying about the nitty-gritty sequencing, and all you need to do is push a, um, a policy. Now, of course, it, this still needs to be an agent app running on the device. And so what we've got there is the Android device policy client, which is built by Google um, and you know, deployed at the appropriate point you know, during it enrollment. So you know, there's, there's, there's really three big sort of elements that I want to, or, or, or features of, of uh, the Android Management API that I want to sort of talk about. It's really about you know, the simplicity of, of uh, being able to build against that, the richness and, and, and power of the feature set that we can offer, um, and, and how it sort of really natively fits into the platform uh, without necessarily having a, 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 an obvious sec separate app for the user to get confused by. It starts to melt nicely into the, into the, the standard uh, operating system UI. So on the simple side, you know, I've already, already talk, mentioned it's, there's one API with all of the different features, and we'll, we'll look at the details of the policies shortly. By, by being policy-based, it's really, you know, it's a fire and forget. You can just push that policy, and then uh, Google will worry about making sure that that policy is applied uh, as quickly as possible, you know, given network conditions, you know, power, whether the device is on even. Uh, and we'll retry until that policy is, is, is set. You also don't have to worry about uh, the challenges of you know, Android development separately. You can just uh, focus on the value add in the service that you're building in the, in, in the cloud. And um, we also worry about um, what features are supported by which version of Android. So if you're pushing a policy uh, that doesn't necessarily apply to a particular device, uh, we will notify you uh, back in, in response to that policy and, uh, and apply the appropriate um, approach uh, to that particular device. The feature set um, is, is already uh, pretty rich. And if you saw Ken's presentation yet, um, yesterday on Enterprise Recommended and how he's talking about how we're extending um, sort of requirements around Enterprise Recommended to uh, EMM and UEM partners. Um, everything required to meet that bar for EMMs is already built in to the Android Management API. Um, we believe that we've come up with a, a sort of intuitive um, API design um, and also um, uh, you, a user interface design, both in terms of enrollment, but also visibility to the user about what's, what policies are applied uh, to the device during that device's lifecycle. Um, from next year's Android release, we're going to have full day zero support for all functionality or management functionality within Android. Uh, we've got the majority of um, Android P functionality in there already, but I don't think we'll hit everything for day zero when it launches later this year. Um, but, but that's coming uh, next year. And we're always updating um, uh, the, the API and the client. So every six weeks, we're coming up with a new release. And you know, we worry about making sure that the agent is up to date on the device um, and, and everything's sort of backward compatible um, appropriately. And then uh, finally, like the, 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 the native nature of this, you know, it, 
the, the API and the agent are built by the same team as the, uh, all of the Android management capabilities within the OS. So we're really making sure that um, the, uh, the operating system features are being used as they were designed. And the UI, as part of that, really sort of um, melts into the device. I think uh, one of the things that we're, we're doing over the next couple of months is actually removing the, the launcher icon for the, the policy client and then bringing that, the, the UI that's there into settings within the Android OS. So it feels much more native, much more part of, of the operating system rather than having, having this separate app, which is, you know, users often ask, well, what is this thing that's on my device anyway? Um, there's a lot less for you to test. Right, so we worry about all of the different you know, device models out there, making sure that there's compatibility testing uh, in place. So we're, we're constantly running automated tests um, against a, a wide range of, of not only hardware versions, but also uh, Android OS versions as well to make sure that, uh, that everything's working. All of the documented best practices uh, that we have uh, are, are built in. And there's a, there's a few little sprinklings of Google magic there as well, um, uh, which we'll, we'll touch a little bit on uh, later. So right, let's get into the, the technical details now. So if you look at the, the data model of the API, first of all, um, you know, you're the developer building, uh, building against the API. So there's, uh, you have the, uh, the developer account associated with the, the service account you're going to query that, that API with. You then have uh, you, the enterprises that you are managing. And an enterprise can map directly to a, a whole company, or you might subdivide by department within a, within a client company, uh, uh, up to you, really. Obviously, an enterprise has a number of devices associated with it. And then each device needs to be associated with some kind of policy. So what are the, what are the things that you're going to enforce or, or enable uh, on that device uh, for, for the users of that device. Now, one of the things to call out about the device to policy mapping is you, know, you can certainly have you know, potentially your whole device fleet mapped to the same policy. And if you've got a homogeneous sort of setup, such like, you know, like that meeting room management system that I, I suggested earlier, then maybe that's the approach that you want. However, if, you're, if it's more of a knowledge worker scenario, uh, so, or in either bring your own device or, or corporate liable devices, and the policies that are applied to a particular user's device are based on you know, which department they're in, what level in the organization they're at, and those kinds of parameters. And as they move around the organization, their policy is going to be effectively evolve as an individual rather than as part of a, a bigger group of devices that share that policy then you, might ha you can have a one-to-one -one mapping between device and policy, and then keep that flexibility then uh, of being able to update each individual user's policy uh, over time. Within the policy, you can then have um, application policies, right? So for every app that you want to make available to a user on that device, uh, there's a set of policies that you can have. Things like, is it force installed for that device? Or is it just available in the enterprise app store for a user to install optionally? Do I send managed configuration down for that app? And what are the parameters? So uh, things like that are all covered in the, in the application policy. And then finally, on the left-hand side there, we've got this concept of an enrollment token. So this is a you know, apparently randomized um, uh, set of characters which get sent down to the device as part of enrollment. So regardless of whether you're using zero touch or NFC-based uh, or QR code-based enrollment for a, a fully managed device, that enrollment token is in, in, encoded uh, within that, in, that enrollment interaction. And then that automatically connects that device with a particular enterprise, of course. And then that enrollment token can optionally be uh, already preloaded with a, with a policy, which is applied immediately as that device completes enrollment. 
So let's take a look at what one of those policies looks like, right? So here's a, a simple example, you know, focusing around app management. And so here is an example where I've, I've said, well, I want to make Gmail available to uh, this particular device. And so all I need to put is you know, the package name. And by default, it's available in the, uh, the enterprise app store um, within the, in the Play app on the device. Right? There's nothing else that I need to do to enable that. Now, of course, I could also say, well, I want to push install that app or force install it. That's an extra uh, a parameter uh, there. And then you see on the right-hand side there the experience that the user would see when they open the Play Store with just that one line of, of policy. What I've also got in the, in the policy there at the bottom is this uh, block ap applications enabled. So what that means is, is that there's no other apps that are available to the user. Right? If I'd switched that to false, uh, what would happen when I s hit the search button in the, in the, uh, the Play app is I actually get access to the full um, the Play catalog of all apps. Um, so I can then um, you know, give a bit more flexibility to my users. And actually, that's something that we've heard requested by a lot of customers who are you know, um, less regimented necessarily about their, their application policies and are happy for employees to um, to uh, uh, install any any app on the Play Store, and then they sort of monitor uh, security in, in in other ways. I've also got here. You've seen there's um, t uh, two lines which are struck out of the policy. Now, if you imagine a, a previous version of that policy which had you know the Chrome Developer Channel app um, force installed on the device. By simply removing it from the policy and then pushing that policy again, that's what removes the app from the device, right? And it's and it's force uninstalled. So remember, we had in the previous slide all those seven interactions that you had to worry about. Now you're removing two lines of policy, right? Super super simple to do the same thing. Okay, let's look at some other examples. So on the left-hand side here, um, we've got an example of uh, always on VPN. So of course, we need to make sure that the VPN client is push installed to the device. So that's the first block there. Um, and then also encapsulated within that application policy is the managed configuration. So particularly important for apps like VPN, where the parameters are quite complicated for a user to set up, we can do that for them. Uh, by pushing that, that managed config at the same time as the install. And so there you've got a server endpoint, username, um, and uh, an authentication type. And then we need to take that, um, that app which we've installed and then actually tell the, uh, the OS uh, that we want to make that the always on VPN package, so the, 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 the VPN uh, handler. Um, the lockdown enable parameter there just says that all uh, all traffic to the internet must go through that VPN. Um, the middle example here, it gives you a sense of some of the things that we can uh, lock down um, on a uh, particularly a knowledge worker device. Um, so we can make sure that things like ADB uh, debugging and, and bug reports are disabled. Um, we can ensure that uh, the device um, gets the time from the network or from GPS. You know, that might be useful if you've got um, so your users are you know, require an accurate time, or you're doing logging on the device uh, that might require accurate timestamps. In this example, we've enforced um, a, a, a high accuracy location mode. So maybe this is for a field worker who are use it, who's using you know, navigation or, or other. Uh, your know, apps which require location, and so we've made sure that you know that can't be changed either you know, by mistake, for example, and 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 impact the user's experience of 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 the apps that they have installed. We're going to block data roaming, so for cost control purposes, uh, the fun disabled is actually. Uh, 
it's, it, that disables the Easter eggs that are, are, are hidden in, in Android. So uh, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few people out there with, in, a, in an Android team with a bit of a sense of humor. And we, we like to uh, entertain our users. But that's not necessarily always entertaining in an enterprise environment. So we make sure that that can be switched off too. Airplane mode disabled, that's probably self-explanatory. Similarly with uh, printing and ambient display is a feature that's uh, becoming uh, more prevalent in smartphone devices now. Um, and you can disable that uh, you know, for saving battery and things like that. On the right hand side then, and I'm, I'm going to show this in a demo shortly, and I'll make sure I'm out of the way. Um, here, this is a new feature in Android P. Uh, which is about sharing devices. So imagine the situation where you've got like a, uh, a factory uh, or a warehouse where a employee uh, takes a device from a shelf at the beginning of their shift, and it could be any device on that shelf. They log into that device uh, with their corporate credentials. Um, and then the, the apps that are appropriate for that particular user are, are made available. And then they can, they can go about their, their, their tasks, log out at the end of their shift. And at the end, you know, we've got the sharing policy ephemeral. What that means is, is that uh, when they log out, all of their data is wiped off the device. You know, and that might be for privacy reasons. It might save uh, memory on the device um, so that other users can use it as well. So what we've got in this policy is the, is the device level policy. And then for each individual user that logs in, we can set a, a separate policy to say, well, which of all of these pre-installed apps are available to, to those users? And we'll take a look at that um, just now. So let's, uh, let's move on to the demo. Uh, and I've got a few states that um, uh, we're going to take a look at. So here's an example. And I've got two devices here uh, side by side. They're going to do uh, the same thing. Um, Two reasons for that. One is so I have a backup. Uh, but secondly, and more importantly, it's also to show you like, how we can sort of manage a fleet of devices which are running the same policy. So in this example, you know, the, the app here is not actually terribly important. This is actually an uh, app for play developers as a sort of a playbook to help them uh, develop. But you'll see on these devices, like, I can't, there's no notifications shade. right? I've, I've disabled the, the status bar at the top so you can't see you know, battery level and all, all that sort of thing. You know, I've only got the back button at the bottom, which is helpful for app navigation. But the home button's gone. The recents button's gone. Uh, I can't even power it off right, by pushing and holding the power button. So this is probably the most locked down state that we can support. And if we can just go over to the laptop, please. Um, we'll just take a look at the, the, the policy that's, um, uh, no, the device on the, uh, the other device on the table, please. Uh, we'll just take a uh, quick look at, at the policy that I've sent down. Uh, I'm just waiting for that to, uh, to come across. Ah, there we go. So, so this is, this, what I've, I'm showing here is actually a tool which we use internally to, um, we can just run sort of um, Python snippets direct and, and, and call APIs directly. So this really is the raw policy that you would see uh, in your code if you did it, you know, if you hard coded it. So at the top there, we've got um, you know the, the Wi-Fi details. Um, so um, that's what the, these devices are using to connect. Lock task features there. So. Actually, we'll see in other examples the, the, the features that appear that we allow. But by, by having nothing in there, that is removing all of those things like the home button, the recents button, that status bar, et cetera. So we've, that's completely locked down. Here you'll see the, then you'll see the applications um, that we've got. And you know, we've force installed all of those. Um, the, the one that we actually looked at that was in um, lock task mode there was the, um, the app secrets one at the bottom, and the other two are just there as dependencies. Um, the, you'll see that the, the, the top application actually is a web app. And I'm going to show you uh, a web app in when we, uh, a little bit later in the demo. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how that is created. Um, and then at the bottom there, that's specifying the app that is locked to the screen. So it's just um, putting in an intent filter 
to make sure that uh, when uh, the, the device comes up, it launches um, that particular app and is, is then locked to the app. So what I'm going to do um, is then actually uh, go to a, another example. So here we've got um, a, what we call a multi-app kiosk. So similar to this example that I just showed you, but now we want to make multiple apps available to the same user, but still pretty tightly controlled, right? So this is not the full launcher experience that you typically have with a knowledge worker device. Um, so here, again, you know, network config, but now you see these lock task features. We're now enabling um, those elements. So we're going to allow a home button because we're going to go. We're going to have a, uh, a basic launcher um, for navigation between the various apps. The system info is that bar at the top. We're going to have recent notifications, and uh, global actions is the when you uh, quickly tap the power button. There's a little menu that uh, that comes up there. In this case, we're going to allow debugging features, and then uh, similar set. The same set of apps are going to be push installed. Uh, as well, and we're going to enable that um, custom uh, launcher that we'll see. So uh, I'm actually going to I'm going to hit the uh, the play button here, and that's actually going to that's now pushed that um, policy to the devices. And then if we can switch over back to the um, the the Wolf Vision, what we'll see uh, in a minute, and you've just got to bear with the Wi-Fi here. Um, but what we'll see is these switch over to um, the, uh, the the new mode. There we go. There's there's the first one gone. Second one's gone. Um, so really updating the policy, changing the mode of operation of that those devices is really really quite quick. Um, and that's leveraging the Firebase cloud messaging that I I, I mentioned before. You know, pushing a notification to the the DPC to grab the new policy on the device. Um, so here's the set of apps that we've made available. This is the basic launcher now. Um, so still pretty restricted in what you can do. User can't still see settings, uh, but they can see the notification shade if there were any notifications from the apps. Um, we've got the home button, of course, and, 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 and recents are there as well. Oh, look. There we go. Um, so um, let me, I, I talked about the web app, so let me just quickly open that. So what we've done is we've published a, um, a, a website, effectively, wrapped in an APK. And that's been a, a regular ask from customers that we've seen about like, how can I get like, a, a launcher icon for you know, a web page that maybe we have internally or a web app that we've built that we want to try and make uh, cross-platform. And so there's a number of ways to sort of render this. Here we've got this in full screen mode. And so really, you're using the full real estate of the device. And it's only when you, when, when you, when you um, sort of swipe up from the bottom that you can see the navigation uh, buttons and, and go back to the launcher. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about like, the, uh, the other modes that we can, we can set up a, a web app in. So that's that. Let me, let me then go to uh, the final example, which is going to be the shared device then. So we're just going to push the, uh, the policy there. And again, Wi-Fi permitting. Um, OK, well, thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we'll go through it on here first, and then they'll have, it'll have popped up there by the time we've finished. So um, connectivity again. Here I've got a slightly different permutation of, of lock task features um, for the device. Um, and uh, what we've said here, actually, we've added, there's a, there's a new thing here, default permission policy grant, right? So what that means is you, know, you might be familiar with uh, runtime permissions in Android, right? So whenever an app wants to access a particular system resource, there's a dialogue that prompts up to the user. That's great in, in the consumer use case because it, you know, oftentimes these permissions are asking uh, privacy sensitive, uh, for privacy sensitive in information. But in an enterprise use case, that might not be so appropriate. And so actually what we can do is either over all apps, which we're doing here, is just grant all of those permissions. Um, so effectively, the IT admin is granting those on behalf of the users. Or you can actually do it selectively on a per permission and per app basis if that's what you want. So you can grant some and, de and deny others. Um, 
And here what you see at the bottom there is um, the sharing policy uh, persistent now. So that's the alternative to the ephemeral. Um, and what that means is that when a user logs out of the device, uh, that actually their data remains um, there. Uh, and then they, when they log back in again, it's just quicker to, uh, to get back into uh, the set of apps that, that, that they've got. Now, this is the device level um, policy, right? And within that, obviously, we want to determine, well, which um, which apps does each different user have access to? So we can do that as well. And so here we've got a, a user, I call him Alex. And um, again, similar kind of stuff, but um, the applications here is actually a subset of what's actually installed in the background on the device. So here, effectively, you're, you're taking those apps that are on the device and you're applying a mask over them as to which apps are available to this particular user. And by having them pre-installed on the device, you don't have to go through an install action when the user um, actually uh, logs in, uh, which, which can save time uh, getting somebody onto their shift. Um, and then you know, we, we've said we, we'll keep the, the custom launcher. Um, and uh, we're actually applying uh, some password requirements here as well. So this is not particularly arduous. Uh, the user just has to put some kind of password in. Um, and then we've, uh, we've applied compliance rules. So that actually makes sure that the password requirements are enforced. So the, the user, uh, when they log in, they'll actually have functionality disabled so not being able to access things like their, their work apps until this condition is satisfied. Right. Now, uh, we have a slight challenge in that our, our friendly Wi-Fi here is uh, not seeming to, uh, to talk to these devices. So, uh, ah, no, hold on. Right, if we could go back to the Wolf Vision, please, uh, then, um, then we've, 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 we've got it. So, this is the, 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 the login UI. So this is a UI that's actually rendered by the agent app built by, by Google. And so there's two ways to add a new user. Um, you could either um, scan a QR code, which could be you know, on their you know, identity badge, for example, uh, or enter a, uh, a code. That will then you know, effectively enroll that user on the device. Uh, and we're also looking at um, it, we're building in uh, Google account support as well for those organizations that, that use Google as their identity provider. Here I've got um, you know, recent users logged into the device. So let me just log in as, as Alex. And so uh, this is the session. It forces me to go through uh, not a very complicated uh, lock screen. Uh, but here's the experience that, that Alex gets. And the other interesting thing to see here, Gmail, here we are. Um, We've set it up to use Microsoft Exchange. Um, and we've pre-populated uh, the username and indeed the Exchange endpoint address uh, through managed configuration. So further saving time for the user um, and indeed mistakes and potential support calls uh, by, by pre-populating that information. Um, so let's just uh, log in as Nikita on this other one. Uh, now, uh, Nikita chose to uh, use a, a numeric password. Um, and here, then, we have a different set of apps available. So according to the policy, you know, we had uh, it's effectively a mask on the apps that are already uh, pre-installed on the device. Um, and then, actually, let me just keep, keep Gmail open on that side. You see, because there's a different policy for Nikita, we've actually got a slightly different uh, username for Nikita. So we really can apply different policies for different users and, and, and set them up appropriately. Um, cool. So um, let's go back to the, that's, that's that demo. Let's go back to the slides, please. OK. So I think I'm hoping with that, with that demo and sort of all those examples and you can really see how powerful uh, the, the policy structure is and just really how simple it is to use. It's, it really is just that 
that piece of JSON that we're, you know, you're constructing, obviously you construct it programmatically, send that down to the API and you're, you're kind of done. Um, so we really do believe that this is the way now to, to manage uh, Android devices. Um, and it's not just us saying that. So um, a partner at, uh, at, uh, at Mobile Tech um, are saying that you know, they've just been able to you know, build so many more features more quickly um, and keep pace with development of, of Android um, through uh, using this API. Um, and there's a number of, of organizations already uh, using this. So, um, so G Suite uh, is start, or G Suite Mobile Management um, is starting to use uh, this API in the background. Microsoft Intune uh, just launched this uh, a few weeks ago for their dedicated devices uh, management. Um, and many others here, you're, actually the, many of the other names are, are more of that kind of end-to-end -end solution type developer where device management is just part of uh, what they're offering. So let's have a quick look at what's next. Um, first of all, um, you, hopefully you've heard of a zero-touch enrollment. So that was a feature that we built into Android Oreo which really enables you to pre-configure uh, a policy uh, against you know, a serial number or an IMEI of a device before it's even unboxed by the user. And so you can then drop ship that device to a user. Or if you're, doing, if you're uh, provisioning many, many devices, let's say for uh, a dedicated uh, type use case, it's very, very quick to set that same policy uh, ahead of time before that the pallet of devices arrives in your warehouse. And then as soon as you power those devices on and they gain connectivity, they're going to retrieve that, enroll, uh, that, that, uh, that policy. They'll know which is the right agent app to, to use. That, so it's not, um, obviously here we're talking about the Android Management API, but Zero Touch works with other agent apps as well. So it, it, it determines that. Um, the, the, the new thing that's going to happen with, with Android Management API is you'll actually be able to see in the API the devices that are not yet provisioned. Right? Today, um, in Android Management API, um, you just see those devices that are already enrolled and, and active. So um, you'll be able to see those unprovisioned. You'll be able to assign policies up front before they even uh, power on for the first time. Um, so that's going to make it much easier to, to start using uh, Zero Touch, and that's coming uh, later on in Q3. We started Android Management API really in the dedicated device space, so that's sort of those single use examples that we saw um, on the, in, in the demo. Um, but now we're extending that to uh, the full suite of, of knowledge worker use cases as well. So whether that's to so bring your own device with the work profile, or indeed with, um, with the, the fully managed uh, device as well. So um, that's all coming soon again uh, within this uh, quarter. Um, and the other nice thing that we're building in, which we'll show you, is that there's not actually the need to download that DPC from Google Play uh, in, the, in the bring your own device con uh, scenario, right? So you'll be able to just follow a URL, which you might deliver you know, through a website or to the user's personal email, and that immediately will start um, the, uh, uh, the process. So uh, we're going to look at another demo now. So if we could switch to the Wolf Vision, please. So here we've got, oh, let's just brighten that up a bit. Um, so here we've got a uh, bring your own device. So this is uh, straight out of the box, um, and actually, you know, I'm, a, I'm not a particularly security sensitive user. I haven't applied a, a lock screen to this. Uh, so this is just uh, st you know, straight out of the box. So um, what I want to do here is enroll this in, in my, uh, 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 with my company. I want to use it for work. Um, and there's, there's a number of options that the, the company has to share the enrollment URL. Um, but actually, what I've done here is I've, uh, I've, 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 I've set my. I've been sent an email, and, and so uh, here, um, uh, hold on, this is the enrollment link. So um, here, 
Well, you can't. Can you, you might be able to just make that out. So that's a fairly standard uh, URL, uh, but it's just got that uh, enrollment token um, as a parameter. And that's something that comes straight out of the, uh, the Android management API. So here we go. We're going to click that. Uh, the system now recognizes that as a special type of URL and asks the user, do you want to set up a work profile? OK, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. And then we're straight into managed provisioning. right? So I haven't had to download that DPC from, from Google Play, uh, which is you know, an extra two or three steps, two or three clicks uh, for a user and to, to potentially get lost. So I'm going to start that. Uh, it just checked the enrollment token is valid. And now it's going to take me through a wizard explaining to me as a user you know, what's the benefit of a, of a work profile. Uh, OK, so I accept that. We're going to start um, setting up the work profile now. Uh, there's a bit more information which I can, I can flick through. In parallel to this, you see the little icon animating in the top there. So that's saying that the work profile is now being created. OK, so I'm going to click Done. Uh, I'm going to go back. To, we're going to go, oh. It's a little unfortunate. Um, fortunately, Gmail isn't uh, so much part of this demo. So now my, my, uh, my work profile is set up. I've got um, uh, the first set of apps. So these are the system apps that are already installed in the device. Uh, and we've just take, uh, created new instances of those uh, within the work profile. But look, I've got a, I've got a notification that says I'm, I'm policy in compliant. Well, Remember, I said a policy that I needed to have a, uh, a passcode lock, and I, and I don't have one. So here, I'm going to click that. Here's the, the, the description. I need, to, I need a screen lock in order to be compliant. And I'm going to go straight into the right page in settings uh, to set that. Now, I'm going to not worry about having a, a, a fingerprint. And I'll choose a pin. I don't want to ask that at startup. So I'll just enter my pin a couple of times. Um, and then that's all set. I'm fine with notifications coming up. And then immediately, uh, I'm in. I'm, I'm back in compliance. Um, and you see the, the notification on the top has gone away. Awesome. So I'm ready to, uh, to start working. And during that time, what we've actually had is, um, is Gmail um, set up. And similar to what we saw before, now when we go back into, into Gmail, uh, we've got um, the, the managed configuration uh, set up that user uh, so all they need to do is, is enter their password. What we've also got in the, uh, in the Play Store, then, is we've got our, our curated apps. So of course, you know, Chrome and Gmail are already pre-installed. But then there's a set of other apps that are available to me, uh, here, the, the, obviously, G Suite, um, to, for me to optionally install uh, should I need to. Um, so if we go quickly to the to the laptop, please, we'll just have a we'll just have a quick look at the uh, the policy used to set that up. So we'll start. You know, here I've applied uh, password requirements now. So something a little bit uh, more complicated than I had before. Uh, so minimum length four, uh, and it's got to be numeric. Um, and then we've uh, the, the compliance rules work exactly the same. So if I didn't have that compliance rules block, uh, I wouldn't actually get that notification as I enrolled saying you have to um, you have to uh, enter or uh, have a have a screen lock. Um, the applications there, and here you see yeah the the managed configuration for Exchange, um, and here actually I've I've added some uh, in Chrome you can add a URL blacklist and a, and a whitelist. So this configuration actually blocks everything except for URLs to google.com um, or, or you know, any of Google's properties. And then further down the application policies, here you can see now uh, making those apps available but not force installed uh, for the user. And so they are then, then are made available within, within Play. Um, Cool. Let's go back to the slides, please. So one of the things, you know, we, we've talked a bit about um, uh, app management and how do we you know, take apps and, and make those available to the, to the users. But on the admin side of things, well, what are we doing? Well, as part of Managed Play and the, the Android Management API, 
we've created this sort of embeddable widget. Um, so it's an iframable um, component where, uh, which you can put into your management console and then allow an administrator to browse uh, the Play Store. All of the apps are available and then mark those as approved, inspect things like permissions, et cetera. Um, and all of that can be done uh, through the Android Management API. You just get a, uh, a, 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 an authentication token which then gives you access uh, to this. Um, but we've also, uh, start, we're, we're also working on adding a number of other features that have been uh, asked for. Uh, publishing private apps as part of that same console experience. Publishing web apps. So we saw a web app earlier in, in the demo. And then also building um, that store and laying it out so it's a nice browsable experience for your users. Um, so certainly the first and the last were have been available for a while um, to do programmatically over an API. But what we found is that um, partners find it challenging to keep up with all of these features. And so by us providing a, a use, uh, an embeddable user experience, um, can make it uh, quite a lot uh, easier and quicker. So let's just take a quick look at how that looks. So the same um, embeddable iframe will then will add navigation on the left-hand side. So you can switch between these various components. And then private app publishing, very, very simple. In fact, much, much simpler than, than publishing a private app through Play Console. Here, all you need is a title of the app, which is obviously the, the name that's going to appear on the launcher, and the APK. And that's it. Uh, that then gets submitted through um, Google's automated review process. And within about 10 minutes, uh, that's then available to deploy to devices in exactly the same way as we've, we've deployed public apps as well. Web app publishing, pretty much the same flow. So we've got a title. Obviously, we need a URL uh, that we're going to encapsulate. Uh, and then, and then you know, I, talk, I mentioned about different display modes before. Uh, the app that we had was in full screen mode. We've also got you know, increasing levels of the, of the navigation sort of Chrome around it, all the way to how you'd expect uh, Chrome to look um, you know, when you open a, a regular page. And then you can also upload a separate icon um, to, to make sure that that's nice, a nice distinctive uh, icon uh, on the, 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 the launcher of the device. And then finally, the store builder, you know, very much a kind of WYSIWYG, drag and drop type experience. So here you're, you're creating uh, the store here, and you'll be able to see that it sort of maps pretty much one to one with the experience that the user would have on the device. So being able to add, so organize things in separate clusters, adding those apps to the clusters, sorting those in the, in the, in the sequence that you want. So just to wrap up then, I think, it, I hope we've demonstrated just how simple it is to get started with managing Android devices. Uh, the, the, the breadth of different things that we can do, both in terms of app management um, and uh, device policy management, and then bringing in those knowledge worker use cases really very soon. And then how native it feels just in terms of the enrollment experience, you know, the look and feel, the color schemes, feeling you know, very much embedded with the Android operating system rather than something that's, that, that, that's, that's jarring. Um, so with that, um, that, you know, that brings me to the end. Um, I have about just under what, two minutes for any questions um, you know, publicly, and then I'll, I'll happily uh, stay and chat for as, as long as you like uh, afterwards. So any questions? Please uh, come up to the microphones if you do. No? OK. Well, then, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, have a good uh, rest of Cloud Next.